I used to care so much about what people thought, what people would say, my jealousy. I, I used to care so much where it, it, it overwhelmed me and it kept me paralyzed. And now I'm at that point where I don't, there's not really much I care about when people say. Welcome back, Life in Abundance. And we got a new setup. We got a third camera. We are uh, balling out here on a budget. Upgraded, upgraded material, upgraded equipment. Yeah, we got lights. We got all kinds of stuff. We are taking this thing to the moon. And uh, yeah, man, we are excited. And uh, we got a good episode for you today. We just got back from our class with our coach last week. And it was the first time that we met this year uh, in person. And it was just strictly coaches. Uh, There's about 30 in person, 40 on Zoom. And it was a whole different um, mentality and the way that they were talking to us. It was like, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going. And let's take this thing as fast as you want to go. Yeah. And so um, you want to talk about being from the class that um, stuck out to you? Yeah. Well, Mark and I, again, had a um, interesting interaction on stage. Um, oh man, I forgot <laughs> about that. Minute, I swear it's like that's when I feel like I can um I feel like on the fly I would rather that than have all this time to prepare and then what you've prepared none of that comes out of your mouth. So in this situation there were um you know multiple people talking about um just wives what do you want from your men and what's expected of your men and whatnot and for um one of the wives females in class stood up and she said guys we don't need a lot I just want quality time with you and for you to be present when you are there and so she stood on stage and said that it's not I'm not asking for a lot I just don't want you on your phone I don't want you to not be there and I know a lot of what that's like um before Mark and I really went through this transition ourselves we had a hard time being completely present and I'll take full responsibility for that because My workday didn't end when I left the salon and I allowed it space in my personal life at home. And it's when you're a business owner, you don't get to turn your phone off. If the toilet overflows, like that's a me problem. If the alarm goes off, that's a me problem. So my phone's always on. And so I allowed it to rule a large portion of our life and our marriage and I couldn't be physically present. And so back to what this gal was saying on stage was we just want you to see us. We want to feel you. And it doesn't have to be for hours. It could even be 10 minutes. And for me, where I was at in this space, my coach called me up on stage because there was only three women in the four women in the room and only a few women online. So he was kind of going around the room to, to the females. So what are you hearing? What are you feeling through this? And when I got on stage, I talked about being in, um, like, the face of the public is a lot easier for me sometimes than to face the one person I'm supposed to be most honest and vulnerable with. And so um, in our coaching program and what we have to do with uh, accountability with our coach is go live every day. So you see that on Instagram a lot. Um, You know, post regularly. I mean, our content we're putting out there is consistent for marketing reasons, but also to get our message across who we are talking to or people who are in similar situations to ourselves. So powerful couples with big dreams and goals who deal with a lot of the outside noise and have to push through that to get to where you want to go. And for Mark and I, we've done a lot of things that most people questioned. In the shift that we've just experienced, it seems crazy to some people, and we completely understand that and realize why you would think that. So it's caused collisions with friends and with even our loved ones, our parents. Um, Like, what are you guys thinking? And so for us to be fully committed and focused on what our end goal requires like a complete like centered alignment with our soul being and our soul purpose and then also to be unified together and there was a long time in my marriage where I felt like we were not in unison and there was a lot of push and pull that never got us anywhere productive and so in that struggle in pursuing what I wanted I felt like I was dragging an anchor and Mark felt like I was trying to push him in a direction he didn't want to go And with those two forces being friction, creating friction, you're never going to be able to go as far as you possibly can if you were unified and willing to do it together. So 
who we are talking to is people who feel in a similar boat. Like if the man's wanting to go further and faster, but they feel like this anchor of pushback or pullback, you're really limiting him. And I had to recognize that from a certain place that I had been living. And then in my case, I really wanted something very different than what Mark necessarily wanted for me and for us. And it felt like I was dragging a dead anchor and it was just exhausting. And I felt like it took everything I had to stay where I was, which was at that point, so much pain existed there. It was like better to just say, okay, I'm done with it. I'm out. I'd rather not deal with this resistance and just do this on my own. And, um, we got close to that point in 2019. It was actually a really, really dark place. And we talk about that openly because I know this is something that people go through all the time and don't feel like they can be honest about and, or they ignore it because it doesn't fit the perfect Um, narrative that the world puts out there that marriage should be or that Instagram puts out there that marriage should be. That's not reality. When the doors are closed or behind the closed doors, the conversations that happen are a lot like what you probably see on this podcast. The interesting scenarios and situations we have been in a lot like you see on this podcast. So we want to just share light on that, that you are not wrong. You are not um, one in a million. You're much more like married couples out there that um, can relate to you, and you're not alone. Yeah. <clears throat> our, our marriage is different because Bree is the, uh, she outproduces me financially. And that's what we we're called on stage for. Bree was first called on stage just for men to show up differently. And then she was saying that there's a lot, there's a big piece that are holding back because of my insecurities of Bree outproducing me. And so I went on stage and one of the questions that he asked me was, uh, like, what am I going to do differently, like, to show up differently? Like, what am I going to do uh, that, I'm going to say, won't let it happen again, but what, how am I going to show up and make this marriage better and make things in my life better? And because um, he is always um, busting my balls about I have to outproduce my wife, like have to, like 10 times. Um, and I have a big insecurity about that and where I don't believe it. Um, I don't see it because my wife has been doing it for so long and I have been kind of doing it. And so I've never, I've never done it before. So I don't really believe that I can. And, uh, actually we're on another call today and he was just, that's what he told me. And, and if I had to be honest with myself, it's cause I don't believe it. Uh, and I, I walk in today and she closes another client and that's a, great. It's amazing. And, um, it's like, you always go back that little, that little tally box in back of our, in back of my mind, which our pastor who married us said, there is no scoreboards in marriage and saying Brie, you know, like Brie has won five fights, Mark, you won four fights or money where it might be. It's like, we're all on the same team. And I know that's how my wife feels, um, but I do know there is a piece missing that if I do make more money and the peace and freedom that I will, that she will have from it, um, that's what I'm going for. And right now I have a bunch of insecurities about that. And I think that um, there's more men out there like that. And even if you are out producing your wife um, as a man, uh, you still have insecurities about if you change things, will your wife leave you? If you get in better shape, will your wife come along with you? If you want more sex, does she want those things? And ours is just financial, like at the end of the day, because um, as we know, if one area of life is off in body, being, balanced, or business, then it seeps into all other um, aspects of life. And for me, it's been business um, for most of my life. And it's nothing that I like. haven't done anything bad. Like I was probably in the top 1% in trainers and how much they make and all that. But I was just married to a, to a, to breed that is just, that is just an animal <laughs> and, a, and a, and a different breed and everyone knows it. And, um, yeah. And that's one of my biggest, that's one of my biggest insecurities in our marriage that I know that the only way that, um, I will have true freedom is to uh, produce my wife. 
because I know I think I, I, I found it in my body. I found it in my balance with my marriage. Um, but it's weird. My wife keeps telling me there's just that one piece that I can't fully give to you. And it's the peace, the freedom that I can rely on you. And so... Um, it comes down to the simple phrase. When I asked Mark, hey, you got this, and he says yes, there's still a little glitch there that I just don't fully lean into that yet. I'm almost there. But, but it'd be financial, correct? Yeah. Is would you do everything you had to do to make ends meet if you had to? And for me, the reality is, is nobody asked me that. I had to do that to make ends meet. In this house we're sitting in, we tore to the ground and had to put back together. We ran out of money when there was a 50-foot trench opened all the way from our bathroom to our laundry room and no countertops. One Not running, a good place to run out of money, by the way. Not a Still got a lot of work to do. One running sink, no flooring. I mean, it was a mess. Every wall we opened up, there were more issues. So in that circumstance, we went over budget and significantly, and Mark was in a headspace where he couldn't even produce more money if he had to because he was so debilitated by fear. And in my case, I become a freaking hunter when I'm scared, when I see what's at risk. I become ruthlessly committed to the point where I become a machine. And the bad part about that is I stop feeling, I stop recognizing, I stop connecting, I just have one target and that's go and that served me well in the time that I needed it but I wish that we could have been in unison and I could have had that connection and commitment with him to go together and I had to be committed because I didn't know if I was going to be a single mother when we came out of this house I didn't know if I was going to still have Mark to count on physically emotionally mentally at the end of the day. So I became this hardened machine that just became obsessed with making money. And I did it and I did it fast. But I can't say that I did it healthy. And now on the other side of it, it caused so many problems for our marriage. So not enough money is a problem. Too much money is a problem. Where is there a balance? And a balance comes in when you recognize the power money has to give you time and the time that you need to create the power with money. And there's a common respect there. And if you don't recognize that, understand it, or appreciate it, it can be lethal and deadly deadly in any relationship for that matter. So for us, we had to find that balance. And yes, Mark wants to outproduce me, and I'm more than happy to surrender that to him. I would be so happy if that was the role and place he wanted to take. I don't care, though. At the end of the day, what I care about is that we are in um, complete unity, that our focus and our eye is on the same thing, that I feel seen and heard and um, felt in it all. Because there was so much of that time where we were so disconnected. I felt like we were dying a slow death right before our eyes. And we had all the things. We, we paid off the debt. We paid off the debt in like a year or two. I don't even know. Two, two years. years. Cash. It fucking paid that off. And it was like, thought it was going to kill me. And I did it in two years. People would take 10 years to pay. And during COVID. And during COVID. In a recession. But no, in all reality, for us, what we wanted was freedom. We just had no path to get there. We didn't even know what freedom looked like. Was it to be debt free? Was it to be Mark financially outproducing me? No. Where it came um, into play, freedom became this place of being completely committed and connected and unified and knowing that you can give up things for money, you can give up time for money, you can give up money for time, there's a mutual respect there. And until you understand it, you're going to live in this prison confined by it. And I just couldn't let go of that final piece. And so as I spoke on stage about this, I was more intimidated to stand in my kitchen and tell Mark I closed a client than I was to go live on social media that some of these grown men who stop, talk in front of doctors all day long can't even fathom putting their face on a screen and talking to an audience. There's probably five people watching them. I don't care. Put me in front of an audience. I can tell you I can talk about broccoli. That's not scary for me. Easy. For me to look my husband in the eyes and know that what I'm going to say is going to trigger his greatest insecurity and lean into him in that moment and love him and connect with him through it, that's scarier. Because there's a greater risk there. Right? Yeah. So 
<laughs> it was um, just a place of pure vulnerability and to be raw and real and honest with people because that those aren't things people openly talk about. Most female hairdressers, I can tell you this right now, they outproduce their husbands because I know the kind of money they make. And if they don't, they're cutting themselves short. Call me about coaching. I'll help you get there. But anyways, my point is, is a lot of times this exists in marriages and people don't want to talk about it. But it's not even so much he makes more, she makes more. It's what are the insecurities that are triggered by that imbalance and having to come to a mutual agreement of what we wanted, no matter how the outside world feels about it or wants to say about it, as long as we are connected and unified, it doesn't really matter. Don't let it hold you back. And we had to come to a place to really give, to surrender that. And we're still not completely there. As you can see in this conversation, we're still not completely there, but we're working through it and we're 10 times better than we were last year or last month even. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. And, um, we both this year, we both know where we want to go in our businesses separately. And then we both know wh where we want to go together, which is somewhere that we've never been before. And so, um, it's so much sweeter and easier when we're both encouraging each other and we both want the best. Yes, do I have insecurities about Brie outperforming me? 100%. By the end of the day, I know those are my insecurities and those are my uh, things that I need to work on. And I'm trying to get rid of, you know, 18 years of, you know, jealousy, guilt, shame, anger, maybe like more than that, pretty much my whole life. And I'm trying to... Um, uh, get rid of it in a short amount of time. And it, it doesn't always work like that. It's I've gotten way better. Like I said, I'm probably 95% there. And um, when couples both know where they want to go and they both know where they want to go together, it's a dangerous place to be because it's a great place. It's freedom. It's peaceful, but you also ruffle a lot of feathers. Mm -hmm. uh, you make a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, you make uh, friends that you've had for a long, long time uncomfortable, or they're like, I really don't get this. This, this doesn't make sense. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had my pastor call me last Thursday, I think it was, and I love the guys. We've been hanging out for, I don't know, like by five, six years, uh, see him like once a week and uh, he's like hey I just want to let you know I'm behind you and Bree in this coaching thing and uh just want to let you know there's you know a lot of people asking questions and and you know I I just tell them hey you know they're called by God and, and I stopped them I said I don't really care mm -hmm. like I used to I used to care so much about what people thought what people would say my jealousy I, I used to care so much where it, it, it overwhelmed me and it kept me paralyzed and now I'm at that point where I don't, there's not really much I care about when people say. And um, that's something that when you get to that, that, that place in your life, it's like kind of a weird place because you've always been afraid to talk to that person or have that conversation. And now you're just willing to have it um, good or bad. And you know that, that in your heart, it's the right thing to do because at the end of the day, when I die, I have to answer to one person. I don't, I don't answer to my wife. I don't answer to my kids, my buddies. I answer to God and God's like, Hey, I gave you this. Did you use it? And I could say yes or no. And my old self, I squandered the gift that God gave me for so many years in wanting to make everyone else happy, wanting to be liked. That was probably the worst fucking thing I did in my life was I wanted to be liked. I never wanted to ruffle anyone's feathers. I never wanted to be the most expensive trainer. I never wanted to uh, be a dick or whatever it might be. But then what's crazy is I ended up being a dick. <laughs> it's the weirdest shit ever. Like you tried to be a dick and then, then like you end up being a dick. And so I know, I, I, I know that. I knew that about myself and that was the most frustrating part because um, I knew how good and great Brie and I could be if I just got out of my own fucking head. And I finally have gotten there like 95% and what we're seeing in our relationships, in our um, uh, communication with mm -hmm. clients and people is night and day mm -hmm. from how we acted even like eight months ago to a year ago. I would say even one of the greater realizations for me in just watching that change amongst us is the certainty and confidence in our children. 
to watch my 10 year old have this confidence about herself. I am so protective of that. And I make sure the way that Mark talks to her is to build her and make her light brighter and never to compromise that because her little soul is so on fire for God. It is so just pure and, um, just she has this dominance about the room that I admire about her and she is my greatest challenge. She challenges my light and I love that. And my four-year-old, she used to cry going to school every day and we haven't had that fight for over a month now and just her security she's feeling of having mom and dad together and having conversations even if they're to disagree it's, it's just so powerful when you can see things in your home right before your eyes change. So um, going back to what Mark said about our pastor calling and being like, hey, people are going to talk. They're always going to talk. His intention is always to keep us on the straight and narrow. And his words at the end of the conversation were keep going, keep serving and doing what you do. Because who cares? They're always going to talk. And we understand it's not for everybody. But this is the other thing we understand is 99% of us are liars and lying. 100% percent yeah, except for God. Lying about where we are was something we did for so long for other people's comfort. So we weren't uncomfortable to say it out loud like we're on the verge of divorce. Yeah, come on over for dinner. But I got a suitcase packed in my, um, in my closet just in case. Yeah, I mean for us being open is we've always been open. You know, it's like we've always just told people like, hey, this is what's going on with us. Like, it's pretty shitty right now. And people just be like, oh, really? Like, you know? And now we're just like, hey, everything's out there. Mm-hmm. Our coach told us one thing is that if you're going to go into this coaching thing, nothing is sacred. Mm-hmm. And he's like, sacred means you're lying to yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, that is really hard for people to hear. And mm-hmm. especially growing up how I did in, in the church and uh, Baptists. And it's just like, Nope, don't talk about any of that stuff. Do not talk about it. Do not go there. And um, But then how are people supposed to know? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how are you supposed to know you're hurting, like in a marriage? How, how, you know, how are you supposed to know these things? Because mm-hmm. you, you need to communicate them, no matter how bad the pain is. Uh, because it's better to be have painful than to suffer. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing we go through with our clients is for you to experience healing and overcome a circumstance, you have to be able to say it out loud. And say it to the person that matters. Because if you can't do that, it does you no good. And that's what happened with Mark and I. I couldn't tell him how I felt. I thought I was numb. I wasn't numb. I came to a place where I was hardened. I was so hardened. I became so angry at him, with him. And then I came to a place where I didn't have a tolerance for him. And that never was a place that I wanted to be. I'm someone who actually extends quite a bit of grace. I am a very loving person. I want to see others win and succeed. That fuels my fire. So to be in a room with him and I can't connect with him or feel those things for him, I knew we were on a one-way path to divorce if I didn't change my heart. The only way I could change my heart is if Mark changed his habits, if Mark changed showing up or not. And I couldn't make him do that. And I couldn't force him to see me. It had to come to a realization on both of our parts that we weren't putting in the work individually. So how the hell could we do it for one another? And so when we became ultra focused on that, we took the last year to fully commit where he was one way with his business. I was one way with my business and we were not intertwining the two. We were one way with our path with God, one way with our path with God. We were not intertwining the two until we had full certainty of what that was, that knowing of relationship with God, till we could introduce that with one another. Because otherwise the rest, it's all bullshit. It was just surface bullshit. Yeah, It was, it was so, <laughs> you said that like she built up a hatred towards me. I built up a hatred towards Bree, not because... Of what she was doing is because what I was not doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was the main difference is Brie was mad at me because I wasn't showing up how I should, not because of herself, but because of me. And then I was more, I was callous towards Brie because I wasn't doing what I supposed, what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And it was just a weird, it's like a weird dynamic because 
I'm like, why am I so pissed at my wife? Like she didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, dickhead, it's because you are causing this. Mm-hmm. And it took me probably a year and a half. No joke of like digging into me by just meditating, working on myself, going down south with my coaches like a year and a half to like finally like just like dig it out and be like okay this is year and a half I felt like you came home every um session like Like I was crazy worse yeah Yeah, it was was like so effed up in the head and our coach was like good you're right where you need to be keep on going you're in the pocket I'm like I don't see it I am broken we are not okay and then pushing through it, you see this little glimpse of light. And when you're in a really dark place, a pinhole of light can seem like the sun, right? And for us, it just was like that pinhole became greater and greater. And now we're in a place where like, wow, the dark day is part of our testimony of what we've been through, but more so a source of pain that other people can relate to that allow us the authority to lead and coach and um for that i'm so grateful i never wish that upon anybody but when that is something that you go through i can lean into that and say hey i was there i see you i feel you and that was me i was you so that is why i'm qualified to lead you and for mark same for him and you'll notice even he's having a hard time telling you it in the camera Because we're still overcoming a lot. And God doesn't say like there's a finish line and once you're there, you're done. Like the fight just gets bigger. Yeah, because it'll probably be when I get to that point where I produce you, there'll be a point where you can relax and then you all the emotions will come to you. Like Mm -hmm. the emotions have came to me in the last year and a half where Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, I've been a fucking terrible person (laughs) for the last how many every years and I couldn't come to grips. Yeah. But it was not true. No. Yeah. I didn't show up. I wasn't a terrible person, but I just didn't show up how I should. And I knew better. And it took me a long time to like dig it out and like pain. And Bree has never been able to fully express the pain that I caused because I couldn't see it, nor did I want to see it. And I've been seeing it since July. And I think that's the full like release that she wants and that's the the financial security of me to just provide. Yeah. And because I'm showing up in my body, like I said, I'm showing up in our marriage, I'm showing up with our kids, I'm showing up with God, I'm showing up in business better, but it's just the end of the day, it's like, hey, what does the P&L say? Like you can show up better, you can have your Instagram look better, your podcast be good, all that, but at the end of the day, like are you making money or not? And... um to some people, it might be, oh my gosh, that's pretty, you know, like it's pretty harsh, but it's reality. And, um, it's the reality of the root of, of your our, insecurities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of yours. Of my insecurities, yeah. And, um, still working on how to deal with it. I'm still digging at it, which is funny because most people, they just stop. Mm-hmm. Like, like when it gets to this point, ah, I'm good enough. I'm comfortable. I've got good enough marriage. It's fine. Like, Mm -hmm. like, like we're good. Mm -hmm. And then that's fine. Then you become either you get divorced, you live a life of just good. Mm -hmm. And Brie and I don't want that. Mm -hmm. We want more. And we know that God wants us to have more. And we know that there's a lot of things that come along with that. And that's pain. uh, And that's collision with people, with things, with ourselves that you have to address because the only way that you grow is by colliding. Mm-hmm. And uh, for a long time, I didn't collide with myself. Brie always collided with herself. So I'm learning how that I need to collide with me and other people to get mm-hmm. stronger and to be better. Yeah, no, and I think you're doing great at that. Mark had no problem colliding with others. But I was in a dick way. I, yeah. I didn't do it in a good way. Yeah, yeah, but the one he needed to collide with the most was the mirror. And when you do a self-assessment like that, it's really hard to lie to yourself about the way your body looks. You're looking at it in the mirror. But when you're looking at your soul, your relationship with God, your relationship with your kids and your family, like there's another person on the other side of that that knows the truth. You can't lie to yourself about that. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, yeah, what we've been through, the rocky times, the hard times, the dark times, they all exist in every marriage. And once you reach another level, there's another devil. So you're never at a finish line. It never goes away. You just learn how to work through them. And communication is key for us. Connection is key for us. Intimacy is key for us. Those are all important factors in our marriage that we value and we protect. And for some people, they can't even say some of those words out loud. They won't even admit that they're an issue or not even existing. Um, And that was us for a long time. So we get you. We feel you. We were you. So I just want to encourage any married person out there going through the thick of it. um, There is light. But sometimes you have to go through that really dark place to get there. Mm -hmm. And for me, I knew at that time in our life, I was called to wake the warrior within Mark is what we call it. I had to shake him and wake him to his core. And it couldn't be like a poke. It had to be abrupt. Like I think of it as like flipping someone off a hammock. There's no graceful way to fall. Like you just fall face first. And um, for me, that was like the shake and the wake had to happen in 2019, 2020. And that came with me packing my bags, but or that wasn't, it wasn't an ultimatum. It was, I'm doing life this way and I want you to come and be a part of it, but you don't get to come like that. So you choose how you want to come if you do, but it's not going to be like this. And so I didn't give him a long list of things that had to change. I just told him, this is my standard for me and my kids. And I want you to be a part of it. I want it to be you. I don't want it to be anyone else. But it can't, that is not you. Right now, that person is not who you are being. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Mark did the work and he dug deep to do it. And it was, you know, still, like I said, exposing so much pain as you're cleaning a wound. It doesn't feel good. You're creating more exposure to the wound. But as you do it, you go deeper and clean it. It's like we're getting to the core root of some of our issues. And a lot of them stemmed from the security that I provided and Mark didn't. And now we're flipping that a bit. And it's very different for me as a woman to lean into that and be able to ask him, hey, you got this. And know when he says yes, he does. So it's just a constant um, push and pull in our marriage and evolving to the next level. And we're doing that together. And I love the beauty that you see birthed in our home with our children, of being able to feel that connection and security with their parents. Um, that I know that our home wasn't providing for them for a short period of time. And that really breaks my heart because they're in foundation ages right now of building that security and confidence. So we want to make sure that we're providing that for them too. Yeah, and if you're a couple that is always pushing for more and you're always wanting to get to the next level, like know that there is pain, know that there is going to be discomfort because uh, Bree and I have dealt with that for a long, long time and I didn't know how to handle it for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now we have tools that help me handle it, help me have a conversation like this on a podcast about my insecurities and knowing that, yeah, they're my insecurities right now, but that doesn't mean that has to like, I have to live by those. Mm -hmm. Um, and I at least know what my insecurities are. Whereas before I was, I didn't know. Um, now I know what triggers me and my wife knows the same thing. Um, we always, you know, as as a married couple, you always know what kind of irritates your spouse, but, um, is it like, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And, um, we're both working to be better. We're both working to, uh, go in the same direction and that's never happened before. And we've, like I said, we've opened clothing stores, we sold furniture, we have a salon, had a fitness business. Like we did, we done a lot of stuff and, um, to the scale, which we done, it was like pretty good. But I know if I was in this mindset and so was Bree, it would have been a whole different ball game. Yeah, totally. And it's, but it's part of our testimony It's part of who we are. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next year. And if you're in that position where you're like, man, like I'm letting my guilt, my shame, my jealousy overtake me. And I know that I could have more. I know that, um, like I'm just like scratching the surface, right? It's holding you back. Holding you back. Yeah. Then, I mean, then please reach out. Like there's a link, uh, on the podcast site to, uh, go to our social medias on same thing on YouTube, like shoot us a DM. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, and just provide the same tools and uh, programs that we 
use for ourselves and for our clients and we get results and we continue to use yeah we're still tapping into this even with the knowledge that we've gained over time it's not like i said there's not a finish line like we still just we got to dig deeper yeah and be more aware and more focused so that's good yep and so that's all we got for today and uh if you're on youtube please uh hit like and subscribe same thing if you're on apple or spotify uh give us a like and a good uh four star five star Kevin, what is it, a four-star or, or, or a five-star? Five-star like, and uh, we'd be happy with that. That's our audio guy. Um, I wish he had was in the camera. We can see his outfit today. Uh, he's, he is feeling himself. So. Fire. Bring him fire. Oh, that was really fire. Yeah, he just flipped me off. Uh, until <laughs> next time, we're signing out. God is good. Bye, guys.